Okay. Kind of sounded professional. All right, Festus. Five thirty-two. Okay, if you've just joined joined us this evening, we have a very special, what should we call it? Bespoke. Special. Bespoke. Bespoke. Yes. Show which Lenny T and I have just de- decided mm. to call the Real Talk Show, um, and we have a very special guest with us, and I'm going to attempt. To pronounce this young man's name. Young. Look. Wow. In, I'm loving it. In this. the correct Can I come way. Back? So I'd like to welcome Festus Akim Bosoye. Well done. I told you I was well going to get done. it. Well I'm done. I'm going to say it again. Well Festus oh, Akim Bosoye, <laughs> who has been selected by the Conservative Party as a police and crime commissioner who would represent Bedfordshire. Um, and we briefly said before the break that the upcoming elections were due to take place on the 7th of May 2020. But because of the dreaded COVID-19, I shouldn't call it dreaded because we're trying to be positive about all of this. But because of COVID-19 or coronavirus, the election has been postponed by 12 months. And we've also thanked Festus for fulfilling his obligation and still being with us this evening. And I can't stress that enough. Because you could have postponed it, so thank you for that, Festus. Um, you're gonna. I know this question has been asked, and I'm gonna ask it because I don't know the answer to it either. So it's a genuine question, I think, for all of us in the studio this evening. What is or who is the police and crime commissioner? What what potentially would you be doing? Why are we electing you? What is the job? Well, um, police and crime commissioners. <laughs> Very, very important job to do, right. uh, and they are elected uh, by residents of the local policing area. Mm-hmm. Uh, in this case, it will be Bedfordshire. Um, the current police and crime commissioner is um, Catherine Holloway, uh, who has been in place for uh, about four years. Yeah, uh, she's a conservative as well. Uh, and um, well, PCCs have a um, the the responsibility for um, reducing crime mm-hmm. in the local area, working closely in partnership with the chief constable, who has re- direct responsibility for the operational side of policing. Okay. Uh, the police and crime commission also has the responsibility. They have, in fact, they have statutory responsibilities for commissioning projects. Uh, in the local area to, pro- to provide support for victims of crime. Okay. Uh, they also have responsibility for the entire police budget uh, okay. for the area. So in Bedfordshire, the budget last year was um, 113 million. Uh, this year, we've had a 7.7% increase in oh, the wow. police budget, yes, uh, which will now be about 122 million mm. pounds meaning we're going to be able to recruit more police officers uh, to keep our communities safe, to also work with the community. Uh, one of, and so one of my priorities, if I do become elected next year, will be to ensure that we have a much more community-facing uh, policing in, in Bedfordshire. Okay. Um, I'm going to try and play devil's advocate for a little mm. while. Mm. So I don't want you to say anything I ask you to be... Like as a personal thing, right? No, please. Okay. Do what you gotta do. Um. So, for example, w- let's say I am a staunch socialist, a staunch Labour supporter, wouldn't even consider voting Tory for whatever reason. Why would I vote for you? Well, there. Why? Are... Why is the position a political position? Well, uh, it is not a political position, okay. only that uh, people who uh, represent political parties are mm. being selected. So there's a there's a very fine difference there, okay. uh, because the Police and Crime Commission is the commissioner for the whole of Bedfordshire, irrespective of what political party. So I certainly will not be a political uh, Police and Crime Commissioner. And also there's difference here. Uh, members of Parliament, when they go into Westminster, uh, you have the government whip right. system, which means that you sit, in fact, where you sit, in the House of Commons, it's even dictated by what political party you represent. Uh, so that's how party political Westminster is. Police and crime commissions are very different. Okay. Um, you are effectively uh, 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 um, the minister, as it were, for policing in your local area. So you're um, not. Di- are you, so are you saying you're not directly representing the Tory party? 
Well, I represent Bedfordshire Police. I represent Bedfordshire Police. Okay. Uh, but for the election purposes, yeah. I you will have a blue bag. I'll have a blue badge okay. on my chest. That kind of stuff. Okay. Um, but my values, I believe, are what make me who I am. Mm -hmm. Uh, if it so happens that my values align well, like I've mentioned earlier on with the Conservative Party, right. and there are some things that, you know, the don't forget, I grew up in East London. Right. You know, I, I grew up on a state where Keir Hardy, the founding father of the Labour Party, had his first parliamentary seat. I right. drive Keir Hardy estate is mm. right next door to the, the council flat that I grew up in. Right. So, you know, I'm very, very um, aware mm. of uh, some of the good mm -hmm. within the Labour Party right. uh, and within with all political parties, well, most political parties anyway. Uh, yeah. So there's good <laughs> to be found anywhere and the issue, there's some policy that I don't always, um, you know, think is yeah. great in some cases well, not the political part. I'm glad, I'm glad you touched on the idea you grew up in, in, in London, obviously, diverse community, it's growing. In your times of growing, surely you must have experienced a lot of things happening. In my case, in, in looking back in the 70s, the SARS, the that. law, you look well, young man, but you look very <laughs> well. But the law, the changes that happened, did that have any effect to, in your uh, values of saying, I'm going to choose this particular party, and if so, what what made you? You know, that, that Lenin, that's a great question. Uh, fundamentally, we're all, uh, in many respects, the um, the the sum and bonum, the the ultimate sum of mm -hmm. our collective experience. Uh, I mean, growing up in East London was tough. Mm -hmm. You know, don't don't get me wrong. I mean, growing, looking back now, you know, that was all I knew. Right. Uh, I mean, I saw some stabbings. I had gun pulled on me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we growing growing up there. I saw some really, really horrible things. But there was a lot of poverty. But at the same time, you, I saw lots of really, really good people who were working hard, trying to make the most um, of the opportunity that they had. You know, some of them bought their council flats and they used that as a stepping stone to you know setting up their own business and you know getting their children onto a better footing in life. Sure. So that of course you know has an impact on your outlook on life and that kind of fighting mentality to survive to you know, I mean, obviously, I was growing up in Eastern at the time of the National Front. Yes, but yes. we remember that, you know, I was chased by the National Front. I mm -hmm. we all were. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> in yeah. East London. So mm -hmm. when young people are down about this guy, you know, this guy's were, it was, it was, it was fantastic. Different. Yeah, but well. still, but still, your strength and your resilience decided, of course, you were, you became educated, uh, uh, went to university. But with my dad, that was not even a question, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. You don't have a choice. And the fundamentals You know, growing up in my life. home that I grew up in, yeah. you know, that day you're not going to go to school. Forget that. You're not yeah. going to come home and tell dad I'm not going to school today, mm -hmm. or you get a report and you're going to come and tell dad that, oh, well, you know, I was, it wasn't me that did it. No, that Absolutely. didn't happen. That's not happening. You know, education was not an, was not even a subject of discussion at all in my family. If you just logged in, a very special program right here on Luton Urban Radio with our very very special guest, of course, Festus Akinbusoya. Oh, yeah? you got it. Welcome, sir. Like of course, that. he is of course conservative as a police and crime commissioner candidate. Right, we welcome you on the program. Okay, Festus, we. Usually, when we do these shows, sometimes we have to fight for people to ask questions, right? But we're sure. getting quite a few questions coming through this evening, which is a good thing. And I think a lot of people are... I think they're fascinated with you. I've got someone That's here... That's a good start. They're fascinated with you, because I've got a question here. The fact that you're black and blue. <laughs> no one has beaten me. <laughs> no one has beaten not in, me. Not in the colour sense, but the, the sense that you're obviously a black man and you represent the... You can't... You do represent the Tory party. And I think for a lot of black people in particular, they're kind of fascinated with the fact that you're representing the Tory party. And I think that, you know, you're not backing down from that. You're very proud in why you are a Tory supporter. And I... Whether I agree with you or not, I respect the of fact that you do. I respect the fact that you're you're owning it and you're wearing it well. Um, so one of the questions that we've been asked this evening is: In these times of hysteria, what would you want to do if, at this time, you were the police crime commissioner? Because the world's going mad, right? We're getting yeah. fake news. We're getting certain statistics we're not being backed up by all the information we're being we've been repeatedly told how many people are dying for covid for 19 we're not necessarily being told how old oh. these people are mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. their underlying issues are we've got people going into the shops sometimes they're stealing stuff they're buying more than they need or what as the potential 
police crime commissioner would you intervene at this point how how would you what would you do well i think one one something i'll like people to just appreciate mm. is that the more every time we ramp up the uh, the hysteria right. um around this which there i mean there is there are real real issues to be considered don't get me wrong mm. is that we are placing a greater amount of burden on our public services right our emergency services the police the nhs mm. uh, our gps our hospitals they are going to be facing a huge deluge of uh, of uh, of cases right. um, and so it's important that we just take a deep breath and follow the government advice yes if the symptoms are persistent beyond right. 14 days call nhs uh mm. 111 uh and, and try to call for it but please don't go to your gp surgery don't go to the hospital right. because you're going to just spread the infection but the evidence is quite is this as far as we know the vast majority of people who contract this virus make a full recovery yes, yes. and by whoever the older we need to stress the that, older right? you are the greater the risk right. of, um, of of a of a, of a death so we, we i can't underestimate that mm. um uh but there are more more people recover from this than die from it as far as we know mm. so far have we hit the peak yet yeah. no we haven't who knows what tomorrow is going to bring? We don't know. Right. Which is why I think speculating. I mean, I've read some stuff on, on the internet and where some people re, re, responded to a post that I put on social media. They disagree with some of it, but fair enough. That oh, we're going to have 2,000 people die in a village in Bedfordshire. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I said, I, I hope that doesn't happen. Right. And I'm not saying that this is not a serious issue because it clearly is. Mm -hmm. But we need to just, you know, um, be calm there's a lot of speculation isn't there there is a huge amount of it right. and some parts of the media aren't helping right. uh, because we're hearing a heck of a lot more about mm. people who are dying mm. than the people who are making absolutely full exactly. recovery from it as well okay. indeed, indeed. The, the other questions we want to share with you here is talking about Bedfordshire right yeah. it's an increasingly diverse community right uh, with Luton and Bedfordshire being quite a melting pot yeah. of course of all communities yeah. now the question is how would you rate the public perception of Bedfordshire police and can it be improved? Well, it can always be improved. Um, and, you know, having met with the chief constable mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, no, a, couple of, a couple of days ago, one thing that I was very, very impressed, and I think your listeners will be very, very uh, pleased to hear this, uh, is that he is absolutely open to making Bedfordshire police a much more uh, um, open, transparent, uh, uh, police force that serves the public as a whole, regardless of where anyone lives in Bedfordshire. Um, how would I rate um, the public's perception? I think it is get, it is better. Uh, there have been some challenges. There have been some hiccups mm -hmm. uh, of risk of late. Maybe we might get to touch on that later on. Um, uh, but it is getting better. And I think uh, if you if you look at even the the level of diversity within the police force in Bedfordshire. Uh, up until a couple of years ago, as far as I was aware, we were one of the worst, mm -hmm. uh, one of the least diverse police force. And now we're, I think, in the top three in the country out of the 43 police forces in England and Wales. So some progress has been made, uh, some reforms are coming in. Uh, and uh, we, from what I've seen so far, I've only just met with senior police officers who are very, very open to taking uh, Bedfordshire Police to the next level. Okay. Um... A question has come in, and I I was going to ask this question anyway, as a mother of teenagers, in particular as a black teenage son. What are your views on stop and search? Well, as a, uh, I have been on the receiving end of stop and searches myself. Okay. Uh, on one occasion, I was stopped by a police officer. In my, Just one occasion? I said on one occasion. Oh, okay. On All one right. of the occasions, I asked the officer why he stopped me, right. and his response to me was, uh, just to make sure you're not one of London's most wanted. Uh, that, was, that was all he said, and he got in his car and he drove off. Wow. But on the other occasions, you know, they've stopped me and they, they gave a very good reason. Mm -hmm. uh, there was nothing found in me. I've never done drugs, never done anything. So, and I was let go. Uh, and I've got teenage uh, children as well, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a 16-year-old son is yeah. one of them. So I do worry mm -hmm. about stop and search. However, uh, I, I have to say that I do support... Uh, stop and search so long as it is done legally and and uh, and with due consideration the dignity of the people being searched 
and it's not being done because someone is black, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. Um, so I, I have no qualms with it because here's the thing. Um, in, in, in fact, our record in Bedfordshire compared to um, anywhere else in the country is one of the best. Uh, the, the success rate, uh, if you can call it success, the defined rate um, of, of, of uh, on when a stop and search is done, I think it's about 20 or 30 percent in Bedfordshire, mm. whereas nationally it is uh, it's in, the, in the teens. So the success rate in Bedfordshire is much better. However, you're still twice or two or three times as likely to be stopped and right. searched in Bedfordshire if you are black compared to a white person. Why is that? Uh, but nationally, it's about eight or ten times. But why do you think I, I, young black males or me black males in, in general are more prone to being stopped and searched? I will be honest with you, I don't fully know. And that is something I would want to try to understand. Definitely. I mean, I have spoken with the Chief Constable, Gary Forsyth, mm -hmm. who I can tell you he is very, very aware of this. Right. Yes, you know, our, our our rates are much better compared to the national average by far. I mean, okay. we and we've got a fantastic stop and search uh, panel um, headed by Montel. Yes, we so do. So you might know yeah. who is who. I mean, we've got one of the best standards yeah. for this in the country. Uh, so he's very much on top of this, Montel, and so is the Chief Constable. Mm -hmm. And if I become the Police and Crime Commissioner, I will want to work very, very closely with them to get to, to, to understand why this is happening. Mm -hmm. Is it that black young, young black boys are twice or three times as likely to be criminal, to, to be offenders? Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know, but I doubt that is the case. It, it, here's an interesting question. That we saw the changes in America when Obama became president. Everybody picked themselves up and tried, yeah. whether black or white, but to assert themselves and yeah. to do well. If you become elected, obviously people will look at it, is it just a token? Or are you going to bring some wealth of saying you've grown up in the UK, you've grown up particularly in East London, because I know what East London is like, and you're going to bring a certain resume of saying, okay, we approached it this way, but I'm going to bring a different kind of uh, candidacy or police crime or missionary how would you do it you know i have spent the last nearly 20 years of my life running a business mm -hmm. you know growing a business from about four people to about 60 people uh and in the last in that time i probably employed about 500 people mm -hmm. uh, to be um working with clients with a combined asset base of about half a billion pounds that takes some serious managerial experience mm -hmm. some serious strategic um mind uh, you know, like I said, I've, I've you know worked in Parliament, and you know I've done all kinds of stuff in the community. So I I think um, I, I do have some clear strengths and competencies. That means I'll be able to do what you've said. Mm -hmm. But fundamentally, I am who I am. Mm -hmm. I can't um, the uh, I can't detach myself from my lived experience, which will inevitably form um, how I make decisions and how I engage with people. Uh, so I, I believe that if I do become the next police and crime commissioner, those you know, background experiences will inform mm -hmm. some of the approach that I put in place. So for example, um, I will be very, very big for, on things like you know, the, the use of drugs in, in our county, which underlies, a, in my opinion, a huge part of the a gun, gang and knife um, crime we have. Uh, it's all well and good, and quite rightly, we need to tackle those who are carrying we dangerous weapons. Yes, we absolutely, we absolutely have to crack down on this. But we also have to look at the drivers of these. Yeah, poverty is part of that. You know, lack of opportunity is part of that. Um, you know, this, some this, serious this, issues at home are part of that. But this, also, so is the use of drugs. Which but these is are these huge. are stereotypes. So we hear about this over and over again, and new candidates are chosen. I'm going to ask you here, yeah. what is it for those listening that you can bring into uh, into this equation that's slightly different? Because we know there's poverty, but we haven't done anything about that. Yeah. Now, Bedfordshire is a beautiful county. Yes, I there agree. are many, many wonderful opportunities for young people. Yes. Would you say tonight on our sh right here that your first port of call will be to work with those disgruntled or young people, not necessarily black, but young people who want to do better for themselves, but are lacking the opportunities? Well, you know, the, the reality is I understand where a lot of these young people are coming from. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I grew up on a pretty rough council estate. I understand what it means to be surrounded by poverty and lack of opportunity and, you know, and all this kind of thing. But I also understand how, what it means to come out of that. Yeah. You know, and, and I, hopefully, you know, I, I think I represent 
uh, an element of the best of Britain, you know. So uh, I think one of the things that I will be able to do definitely is to um, reach out to these young people and, and ensure that we have uh, projects commissioned in place to work with this with these uh, young people because they, our young people, they need help. Yeah. They need help. They don't Sorry. need to be put in prison. They don't need to be... Can I just interject there, yes, Christus, yes. because... Um, you know, I'm not disagreeing with anything you're saying. That is good. And um, <laughs> we, cl we clearly, I think, nationally have a problem with young people in terms of taking drugs and distributing drugs. But I don't think... It's not young people taking the drugs. The evidence shows that younger people are not less likely to take drugs than before. But I there think... Is a there, is a, there, is a, there is a socioeconomic group that has seen the highest increase in the consumption of crack cocaine for example and that is the fact households okay, earn over fifty thousand pounds a year i think i think it's kind of been tried and, and tested that you know in terms of our young people dealing drugs then right they're pretty much at the bottom of the food train and that there is a huge issue with richer whiter people actually running and supplying drugs to browner well, lower income people in terms of dealing the drugs on a street level and it's very rare that i hear anyone talking about the kingpins of the drug problems that we have in this country we seem to and obviously we need to target our young people and protect our young people because i see they're i see victims. Uh, they're, victims. Ways, they're victims they are victims they've been exploited Many of them so been exploited, yes. was, would part of your elected role be to go up higher on the food chain and look at the people that are actually controlling the drugs in well, on on our streets. Well, and like, well, like I said, the the one of the primary roles of the police and crime commissioner is to reduce crime okay. in the area, yes, wherever it is going to be found, right. where, at whatever level it is. Okay. And in my opinion, you know, these guys at the top, they are exploiting our young people, sure. uh, whether they're black, uh, brown, white, whether male mm. or female, because now we see more and more young young girls being dragged into this county line drug gangs and we hardly see the guys at the very top right so uh, yes you're absolutely right Good we point. need to deal with those guys rather than just uh, focus our attention uh, on the younger people okay we've got quite a, a big question here which we've got two and a half minutes left Before so we break, but we've got loads of questions yeah, yeah but we're going to ask this question if and if you don't get the opportunity to answer it then we can go back to it so a question has come in, it's, it's a question and a statement. It's a known factor that poverty is linked to crime. What are you doing to empower black grassroots community organisations or individuals by way of redistribution of resources to have a voice and work in non-mainstream approach to make a real difference? Surely if, you, if you're keeping if you're if you keep putting clothes into the same established machines yes. you'll get the same results yeah. so i think the yeah. main question is what are you what are your intentions if we elect if you are elected to empower black grassroots community organ organizations or individuals by way of redistribution of resources to have a voice um and I think what the, the, the listener is actually saying, in, and I can actually um, identify with that, even though I don't know who that listener is. I think uh, um, as a, a black constituent in Luton, and on a bigger scale Bedfordshire, I think a lot of us feel that we're unheard and we don't have a voice. And I think a lot of us feel powerless. So what, in your potential role of being the police and crime commissioner, how would you make us feel more heard? Do I have time to answer that? We'll give you just think six, about yeah, it. Think about it, and we'll come back. Okay, we'll just shove Because it's break. a huge question. It is right? a big question. It's, it is. It's a huge and there question. There is an answer for it. It's very simple. And again, of course, the point of our show today is not just it's a black or white issue. No. It's not about conservative or labor. It's a question of saying we need to come out from these divisions between right. parties. Yes. However, be constructive. However, it may sound like why are they talking? It's not. It, it, we've gone through this. So, but I do like what you said earlier on. When elected, you'll be able to reach out to young people. And if it's black people, that we also welcome magnanimously. If it's young people of all different races, we Absolutely. welcome that. Yes. We're going to take a little break. We'll be back with some more questions 
for our very special guest this evening. Of course, Empress myself, Lenny T. We have a talk show with our very special guest, Festus Akinbusoya. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Luton Urban Radio. The Pulse. Yeah, my phone's blowing up, though. How we doing, sir? How we doing, Lenny? Yeah, yeah. What we're going to try, we don't want to get into deep to the policies. Get us, get us deep the yeah, but we're going to have to. But I love the way you're talking about life. And I need to emphasize and say there are some black people without preservatives. There are some black people without perhaps we look and listen to. And it's not just, you know, against whatever. But your future good points have to come from you know, the reality. And, 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 of the people who are most affected by what yeah. you're doing. You're disconnected. You can only make decisions based on what you know. And if you're surrounded by people who are like you, you're always making decisions about what you know. You know? So but the good thing is based on what I've seen so far. I mean, I get on very well with the guys at, you know, Ben uh, Police HQ. They, they're uh, not on the same page. No job is too small. We cover Luton, Bedfordshire, Hertfordshire, and London. We'll be back. So